So let's get started. And today I'll present the engine that I like the best. Okay. My, recently I've discovered this uh, engine that plays pretty much like Alpha Zero. Um, Alpha Zero, as you all know, is the engine who beat Stockfish back in 2018 and had a really kind of flamboyant style, I would say, and very human-like. So it would sacrifice pawns, knights, rooks, whatever, left and right, and would play for the long-term initiative, right? So here, um, today we will study this engine called Classic R. You can see it on uh, the top of the screen. So right here where my mouse is. So Classic R and then point zero, I mean, 0 0.9, 0 0.1. And so on. So the new new engine that I think was uh, introduced in just last year, 2021. At least I learned about it um, only last year, if you, like basically like half a year ago, and uh, was really really impressed. So we will have challenges as usual, and some some of the moves will be quite difficult. So then I'll just explain them and we'll show you what's going on, and hopefully you will learn something and we'll be using those ideas in your games as well. Right, so now the first one is already not easy, but I wanted to use this game as an illustration um, that the styles are quite similar between Classic Aura and uh, Alpha Zero. So here we have E4. Definitely an unconventional idea. So what's going on here? So instead of doing something standard, maybe like short castle, knight e5, maybe bishop g5, white immediately puts pressure on the center and goes e4. Okay. So now what's what's the point here? So the idea is that if they take on e4, then finally the bishop on a6 wouldn't be doing much, right? And uh, Later on, you will see that rook on a8, knight on b8, and the bishop on a6 will be effectively stuck there. Um, why? Because here they, they don't take on c4, but even if they did, pawn takes bishop c4, and then somehow knight b1 is the winning move. Definitely an unusual winning move. So e4, beautiful pawn sacrifice, but here we're just getting started. So we'll skip this part. Okay, now a quick question, where the knight should go? So you can just type your answers in the chat and then, um, yeah, we will discuss. And then again, the timer is set up just for two minutes, uh, pretty much all cases today. So we can move faster and cover more examples. I think in, the, in this case, the quantity is even more important than the quality. Um, guys, this is a knight move. Okay, not a, not a queen, just a knight move. So I almost feel like I should ask a question, what move do you think they played? And then what move would you actually play yourself in the game? Because <laughs> you know? I see a lot of people are suggesting knight h7, which is the correct move. Uh, and then, you know, if, if you go like this in your real game, well, then you got some guts, <laughs> okay? Um, I know lots of players probably would just go knight h3. Yeah, okay, so it's almost like, what what do you think they played, and <laughs> what 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 actually would you play? Uh, so, but hopefully, hopefully, we also play knight h7. All right, knight h7, and then um, the idea is to sacrifice a knight. And I'm sure somebody actually suggested that in the comments. I think Brian suggested knight f6. Um, yeah, okay, so yeah, knight h7, then knight f6, a knight sacrifice, which doesn't look like much just yet. Um, so then we pick up the pawns, right? Now notice queen h4 is a really powerful idea. You don't want to take the pawns immediately. You would much rather first pick up the f6 pawn and then h6 in that order. Because uh, you go bishop h6 here, then king e7, and I don't see any good continuation there. Now here, after queen h4, king e7, perhaps there's something like bishop c3. So remember, if you can take something at any point, you never take it immediately, OK? This is a really important concept to remember. I call it procrastination principle. OK, so you definitely want to procrastinate in this game. All right. So yeah, they pick up the f6 pawn. Then rook e1, you see, don't even care about the h6 pawn just yet. 
then once black forced them, then finally they take on h6. And white plays like nothing happened. Like, you know, they're not down at night, everything is nice and dandy, everything is perfect. Now, in this situation, um, the next move is really important. So try to figure out what it could be. Here we have no timer, but um, try to take like a minute, a minute and a half max, and then we'll keep going. It's nothing tactical. We're not trying to win right away. Yeah, and Classic Aura is a neural new network engine. Yeah, that's right. I see some questions in the chat. So it was a um, Queen's Indian, right? Which resembles 2018 match between Alpha Zero and Stockfish, even like the openings are the same. And Classic Aura already sacrificed quite a bit. In this case, by the way, uh, you, you need to visualize how can you win this game eventually, like because of what? Like what could be a, a dream case scenario? Like what we have that they don't have and how can we utilize it basically? Okay, we got, we got one correct answer from Josh, good job. And now Eric. Then Austin. Oh, Austin got the correct idea. Yeah. And I see Abiram also got a good move, good idea. Um, okay, well, uh, yeah, and I see and um, Roger as well. Okay, so many more people are getting it right. Okay, so yeah, good job, guys. Um, so we basically want to promote the H pawn, and in fact, I did have a timer here, which I forgot about. All right, so H4, yeah, the, uh, jumping ahead, the H pawn will be promoted in this game. All right, so H4, that's the reason why we win the game. So you always need to think, like, visualize the scenario, how can you win this game? Like, and also, I, you know, I have a... Whenever I play, I have a disaster case planning as well. I always try to think, how can I lose the game? Okay, well, not because I want to lose the game, but just because I want to prevent that from happening. So, you know, maybe I will trade off some pieces that I don't need. Um, maybe we'll do some small prophylaxis that will be helpful like five or 10 moves later. You know, that's the good, that, that would be a good example of visualizing. All right, now, um, not sure what's going on with this rook d7, bishop b7 looks incredibly passive. All right. And then the next few moves can be skipped. All right. And then um, originally when, when I stumbled upon this game and how I discovered classic aura engine, I was just uh, studying this material correlation of uh, queen to rooks and two bishops versus queen to rooks, bishop and knight. You know, because it's helpful to study how pieces interact between each other and, you know, which in which situations bishop is better, in which situation knight is better, and how heavy pieces are related to all of this. Okay, so, and when I saw this position, you know, I saw, in fact, I saw this position. All right, so I saw um, this position and I almost like skipped through this game because I'm like, white is completely winning. And like, why do I even care? But then I'm like, oh, wait a second, it's Black's turn. Okay, so uh, Black is in fact up a rook here. And, uh, you know, when I was looking at this move, I was wondering why do they play rook before? And it kind of makes sense because uh, now the bishop on f6 is uncontested, right? The bishop on f6 can live there forever. And I just feel like, yeah, Black doesn't have any any pieces to challenge our bishop on f6, basically the pawn will promote. Now queen f4, that, that move is more or less understandable. Now here, the next move was <laughs> tough, but um, maybe tr let's, try a let's try to take a minute here and maybe guess this. this. This one is just for fun. The move doesn't necessarily make too much sense. In fact, later when I checked it with the stockfish, stockfish was like, we don't even need it all that much. But nonetheless, the engine played it. Uh, 
Maybe let me give you a few options here. Okay. Um, so let's see what options do we have. So the options would be um, kin H3, G4, A3, and queen G4. Okay, so again, four options, kin H3, A3, queen G4, and wait a second, what else did they say? Um, well, I forgot my own options. So a3, king h3, queen g4, and there was something else. All right, anyway. Ah, and g4, yeah, there you go. Yeah, this one makes very little sense. They played a3, and I was wondering why, and actually, like, no particular reason, honestly. They just, like, <laughs> felt generous, honestly, mm -hmm. so. In some in some cases, like if queen takes, then um, so you have queen takes. Then in some cases, you benefit slightly from not having queens on the same rank. You know that's about it. But do we really need it? I mean, no. You know, we still do the same thing. We just go g4 and d2 and whatnot. All right. In queen f8, and then here finally it's time to push g4. Okay, g4, and and then, yeah, that's it. Now just the h pawn promotes. It's quite kind of really pathetic to see the knight on b8 and the bishop on b7. And notice we never, ever take the rook on e7 here. If you show this position to somebody and they tell you bishop e7 is the best move, they should do some serious work on strategy, okay? Because bishop e7 would have been absolutely ridiculous. The bishop is just way too good on f6. Okay, and then at the end, they even trade queens and then finally promote the h pawn. Yeah, and that's it. Okay, so yeah, this is an introduction just to show you why I think this engine is really worthwhile learning from and why the styles are, the styles are quite similar between classic aura and uh, alpha zero. Basically, the opening was the same. Sacrifices were kind of similar. Also, peace was sacrificed in the same way. That's pretty, pretty crazy. All right, now let's move on to. Okay, so let's move on to this database. And here we will have the the challenges randomized. So, I'll be closing the database and then again opening it, and then it will give us um, random random examples. Okay, so in this one. Um, we actually looking at the game that this engine lost. Um, well, first of all, a little bit of uh, kind of uh, introduction. How did we get to this position in the first place? So yeah, we had some normal opening more or less, some kind of Dutch. Yeah, some like Stonewall, something like that, right? And then um, and then here they just randomly sacrificed the knight on e4. And I was like, all right, quite interesting. All right. So they sacrificed just for a pawn. Now try to figure out what should we do here. By the way, the sacrifice of the knight on e4 probably is an overkill. I don't think it was necessarily correct. Knight g5 would have been better. But white has only one way to be um, better here. Everything else is like nothing special, honestly. There's one move that proves advantage. Everything else is like, mm. But it's not d5. I, I see some people suggesting d5, which is kind of a good idea to get the bishop out, but we don't want to do it just yet. Bishop e4 wouldn't work for many reasons, maybe primarily queen e3 and then queen e4. All right, well, I'll give you guys a hint. Uh, we will sacrifice the pawn on e3. So the move lets them take the pawn. 
All right. Yeah, uh, Rio, good job. Yeah, basically, uh, correct move, correct idea, but then uh, just one one inaccuracy, although it's not like a deal breaker or anything. So instead of king h2, um, uh, king h1. All right, so king h1, and then the idea um, the idea is to play bishop c1, right? We don't really need the king on h2, but pawn on g3 is not hanging because of bishop c1, right? And that's it. All right. So you have bishop c1 and then. Okay. Um, so yeah, that, that's why, uh, so why h4? Why do we sacrifice a pawn? So, well, first of all, First of all, if we protect the pawn and do something standard like knight f4, I feel like we're gonna lose pretty quickly, you know, g5 and then knight f6, then h4. So black has a super long term, um, super long term initiative. So basically, if you're not doing anything related with h4 previously, they would just run us over, you know, they would play h4 themselves. They would play bishop d7, like knight d5 or knight g4, king f7, maybe at some point, or king g7, honestly, it doesn't matter, rook h8. And we just have nothing to do here. You know, that's my main concern. Okay, so it's a really great prophylaxis. Now we have the f4 square, and eventually, eventually white won this game. You see, they didn't even protect the pawn on, that pawn on e3 for like a few moves. They're willing to sacrifice it. Black never took, and eventually white regrouped their pieces and won this relatively easily. All right. Okay. Uh, let's keep going to the next example. So here, let's. Okay. Let me actually pick it this one myself. Okay. Cool. All right, let's do this one. So first of all, notice the, the engine's name uh, is Mr. Bob. I don't know who names the engines like that, but whoever does, <laughs> like, <laughs> I just hope that person doesn't work at any sort of media or advertising sort of job. <laughs> Mr. Bob, <laughs> that's a bit too much. Anyway, um, so here uh, we have, something kind of like London, but not really. Well, I guess it reminds me of London. And White just decided to play H4. I don't know if you guys saw uh, H4 in London. I personally haven't really seen. Um, personally haven't really seen H4. You know, feels uh, a little weird. Um, yeah, the h4 is kind of weird, but uh, let's see what's going on here. So bishop d3, and they just never castle, in fact, they just go for the attack, rook h3. So next time you play London, maybe you can use one of the ideas that you see here today. Because I know lots of people play London, and I've been playing London be before London was called London, okay. Um, I actually called it a, like a busy college student opening or a businessman opening, because that's what you play when if you don't want to study anything in the opening. But yeah, this is pretty cool. I've never done this myself, but um, but yeah, this is a really cool idea. Okay, so rook g3, now knight f3. Okay, now try to calculate and figure out what should white do here. So you see Brian uh, has a good idea, but the move order is not exactly uh, the best. Although kind of, I don't think it makes too much of a difference, honestly. Also, uh, Han Chi got this. Well, almost, almost identical answers. All right, let's let's take a look what happened here. Okay, so if you, so basically a couple of you were quite close to this. All right, 
So the, the move was knight g5. All right, so knight uh, g5, now queen h5. Okay, so I saw that a few of you have suggested bishop h7, then knight g5, and then queen h5, and then hg. And I think it might work as well. It's just the previous, I mean, the, the line that the computer played give, gives black um, fewer options probably. So that's why they did it. But it leads to very, very similar position here. Okay, now bishop h7. I think black just doesn't have any, any other options really, right? So bishop h7, hg. And despite the fact that black is up two pieces, black is just completely lost. But look at this. Look uh, how the attack went on. Even here, white is down a piece, but nobody really cares. You know, white is completely winning here. All right, so quick question. Take on e6 or don't take on e6? You can just type plus or minus. If you support queen e6, type plus. If not, type minus. We'll do it quick. <laughs> All right. Overwhelmingly, uh, I see people suggesting minuses. Um, and yeah, I mean, this is a minus. And that's just because I asked, and it kind of makes it obvious that we should not take, but also because um, here the queen finally gets to the king. You know, the queen on f7 is a good defender. And later on, black can always go like bishop c8, and the bishop can join the defense, right? And if you don't take on e6, then bishop on b7 is kind of completely dead, right? The bishop is not participating. So that's why we can even say that, technically speaking, we can say that uh, the material is even here. Okay, we can say that we're just basically free rolling here, attacking for nothing. We didn't even sacrifice anything. It's all the same. Because at the end of the day, if this bishop makes zero moves and just keeps sitting on b7, why would it even matter, right? Okay, so let's see how they continued. So rook h1, the rook comes in. Now the queen gets closer. And then we have a rook left here, rook g4. Yeah, lifting rooks is probably one of the most enjoyable things in this game. I really enjoy it. Rook g4, and then uh, black is obliged to go e5. Otherwise, rook f4 would be finishing the game instantly. Then rook f4. And now here white has many different ways to win, like plenty. And so I got one question, why black doesn't go rook a6? Rook a6 here, probably just rook f7, queen g8. That, that looks completely lost. Yeah, OK, so queen a6. At this point, it doesn't matter. Any move is lost, you know, I mean, I mean, if you name your engine Mr. Bob, I mean, your engine loses every single game. I'm not, I'm not surprised at this point, you know, that's kind of expected. All right, but now try to find the quickest way to win. Again, here we have multiple answers, multiple choices that are just fine. But one in particular was the most effective the coolest one. Be cautious here, though, because I see some people suggesting rook f7. But um, rook f7, they just go queen f7. They will take it. And then you basically need to start over. All right, I see rook uh, f6. Yeah, lots of people already found it. Yeah, rook f6 is uh, the move that was played. Yeah, king, uh, rook f6. Again, not really necessary. Honestly, you can do almost whatever here and still win. Um, but if you have time in the real game and you're not in the rush, you know, then you can, you can do it. You know, you can calculate a little bit and then go for it. I used to think maybe some such moves are a little risky, but I'm like, 
now I'm like, if you if you calculated everything, you had plenty of time. You took like good ten minutes here, made sure everything works out. Yeah, sure. Then just go, just just go for it. You know, after all, by taking ten minutes here and winning uh, after rook f six immediately will save you time in the long run, right? So yeah, this is all good. And yeah, this is it. All right, let's keep moving. And let's take a look at this game. This one is pretty deep, so it's white to move here. All right, well, here uh, we already got a few people getting this right. Okay, so the first one was um, Abiram, then Rio, and then Brian, then Vihan, and yeah, and then uh, Seper, I guess. Hopefully I'm not uh, mispronouncing the names. Uh, but yeah, uh, G5 is absolutely perfect. Okay, now before you get this move G5, first qu question that you need to ask yourself, what happens if we simply take the pawn on E5, right? Because nobody looks at this position and immediately thinks, oh, G5, brilliant. No, you need to look at the most obvious move in the first place, right? And the most obvious move is this capture. Well, obviously, right? Um, and then the idea is now black is doing really great after 97. And if uh, EF, then just simply bishop of six. And then, um, yeah, white is up a pawn, but I'm not sure if it's any good because black is getting huge counterplay, rook fc8, knight b6, c3 target is always there. The A pawn might be somewhat dangerous. So, yeah, it's just kind of weird, you know. Like even if even if somebody told me white is much better here, which white is not, but even if white was, I would still not play this for white. I would say no, I don't want to do this. Even if somebody told me white is winning here, I would still not do this. Okay, that just goes to show that uh, you need to be critical about the engine's evaluation. Like sometimes I've seen positions where the engine would be given huge advantage, like plus one, plus two. And I'm like, I'm still not comfortable in playing those positions. I would much rather go for something smaller, but you know, far, far more understandable. So here, yeah. But by the way, the objective evaluation is like zeros, I believe, um, you know, which is pretty typical for stockfish. It loves showing zeros. All right, so now we don't take the pawn on e5, but we play g5. So what's the idea? So I hope you guys have seen this variation. So they take, then takes, then knight c5, then knight a4, knight e7, because what else, right? Okay, and what was the next move here? What was the idea? So I see lots of H4 suggestions, but H4 was not the point like at all. <laughs> I see, I see a good joke in the chat. Me, what's your favorite number? Stockfish is 0. 0.00. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> I feel like, you know, in uh, the old times, uh, before the computers and the engines ever existed, uh, nobody was using chess computers, the most common evaluation was unclear. You know, people would just put unclear, which basically means either it's really unclear or I'm just too lazy and I feel like I don't want to analyze this anymore and you guys go figure this out by yourself. Uh, by yourselves, right? And I feel like that's exactly what Stockfish is doing. Stockfish is like zeros, just do whatever, unclear, you know. You guys, you guys can do this. Maybe Stockfish is just yeah, being lazy, exactly. It's almost like Stockfish doesn't want to assume any responsibility, you know, just says it's all zeros. So. 
But anyway, um, in this situation, okay, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but basically the idea um, was rook c1. All right, so rook c1, and then it might not look like much, but basically this is already, well, winning uh, for white. All right, so now the question is, what do you think is the evaluation in this position? Like in terms of decimals, like if you had to put a number, like in terms of centipons, you know, like stockfish evaluation and stuff. So again, if it's a more than plus three, then completely winning. Okay, if it's a, like between 0.75 and 1.55, that's like much better, right? And 1.54, I should say. So we see Rio says that the valuation here is the pi number. Oh yeah, today is the pi day, right? Okay, so I got all sorts of answers here. I mean, obviously it should be a positive number because we know that white is much better. I mean, just winning actually. So here the correct evaluation is like plus four, a little bit more than plus four, which, which shouldn't be that surprising, honestly, because you go in bishop d3, then rook h c1, and then everything falls apart. Like b6 pawn is falling and black has no counterplay. When you think about it, black has nothing to do, nothing to attack. And yeah, so it makes a lot of sense, honestly. Or at least it should should be making a lot of sense. B6 is falling, B pawn promotes. Um, even you can say that uh, in terms of pawns, you can say the pawns are even here because the G pawns are doubled, right? A5 is blocked. So yeah, we don't we don't e we don't even have any stuff that we sacrificed truly. Really. So that was the idea of G5. Now black goes 97 because engines want to defend properly. Right, they um, they don't want to just give up too quick. All right, now knight b2 surprised me a lot. When I was looking at this game for the first time, I was like, that's weird. Knight c5 looks a lot more natural, but for some reason, it's not the best. And maybe because of this, I'm thinking, but I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, so knight b2. Then we trade the 91. And here, believe it or not, the evaluation is still like plus 3.5 for white. So somehow the A3 pawn is going to fall pretty quickly. And you can see that on the king side, H7 and G6 are basically equivalent to G5. So you can say that we have, um, so we, we pretty much like have an extra pawn right now. And soon we'll have the second extra pawn on A3 as well. Okay, this one should be pretty simple. Okay, white to move here. Nothing too crazy here, just basic end game understanding. All right, yeah, here we have, uh, okay, so Josh, Rio, Alexander, Vihan, Brian. <laughs> Okay, Olivia and lots of people after that. Okay, so Eric. And now, yeah, we just need to go King C3. This is just the beginning of King's career in this game. Like, look at this King B4. Then King A5. The King is a monster. Actually, recently uh, I invented a new term uh, myself. I, I basically say that you like you may have an extra king in the end game so having an extra king in the end game means that you have that extra piece which is kind of uh, something between knight and the bishop in terms of value so we can say that white is up a piece in this situation all right okay but well, what do we do next 
how do we make progress here? So I see in the chat, Tori says that he heard the term for the first time yesterday. And I'm like, well, somebody, somebody else, I guess, named, I mean, coined the term before me, extra kink in the end game. So yeah, hard to be original, I guess. Okay, so here, yeah, let's discuss this. Okay, we have uh, a few people actually suggesting some good stuff. So we have Rio, Brian. Um, Rio and Brian, okay, I guess let's vote it. Okay, so yeah, the, the move was King A7. Time to go further. Again, you, you can't be afraid of getting made it here. You have an extra king, remember that, all right. So you go king a7 and king b8 later on. There we go. So the king basically single-handedly wins the game. All right, king b8 and then collects the b7 pawn and everything else. So it's quite, quite impressive, right? If this game doesn't convince you to use and abuse your king in the end games, then I don't know what else will, right? Really great illustration how effective the king might be. Yeah, and this is it. Okay. Anyway, so let's keep going. Now we will take a look at, yeah, we already looked at this. Yeah, this one is good. All right. Um, I guess we will skip the tactical stuff. I, I just wanted to show you a few really deep strategic concepts. All right, so bishop c5, yeah, and I see Santosh already suggested bishop c5, yeah, and I, I haven't even planned to, to ask you guys about bishop c5, just mark this moment, um, just so I have some talking points, kind of, you know. So yeah, we sacrifice the bishop on the five, bishop c5 is quite understandable, right? Then one castle. So, so far everything goes like it usually does. You know, we sack a piece, we long castle, we attack the king that's stuck in the middle, right? Pretty, pretty standard. Now at this point, um, we wanna play rook f8. Yeah, and this is from the king's gambit, yeah. Um, that's right, yeah. You can even see the index on, at the very top. It says uh, c32. Uh, so c32 is uh, the king's gambit. It's good to, to remember some of uh, the most common indices. Um, it just makes you, makes you more knowledgeable about the openings, makes uh, memorization a lot easier, searches, all sorts of filters that you can do in chess base, you know. All right. Now, uh, rook d5, yeah, this is all standard. Now the next move is nearly impossible to find, but still we will try to do it, okay? If anybody finds this, I'll be really, really impressed. Yeah, see the chat. The next move is impossible to find. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, I also have to have some fun, okay? So as you might have expected, it's not queen h4, it's not knight d2. It's not bishop b4, not, not bishop f2, knight f2. Basically, forget about the obvious moves. So it's not even an attacking move, and that's the craziest part. It's not bishop a3, it's not king b8. It's not knight f6. <laughs> you guys can just throw moves at me, honestly, at this point. If I see, if I see the right one, I'll, I'll just tell you. I'll, I'll tell you right away. Yeah, I keep suggesting, I guess. I still don't see uh, the right move. 
Oh, geez, this chat is going to be so spammed. <laughs> oh my god yeah there's oh no 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 not correct no i almost thought that i saw the correct one no never mind yep all right well we have the winner uh josh and rio rio's notation is kind of off but yeah the the move was rook d d8 all right <laughs> so <laughs> You might be disappointed. You're like, okay, cool. <laughs> so I see that, uh, yeah, some people are confused. You know, there's this uh, Pokemon called Psyduck, right? That is always confused. Like, my brain hurts. I'm confused. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and it looks really silly. It's kind of funny. Uh, but basically, the idea is the engines. Um, and the engines don't mind going for the better end game, no matter even if everything is on fire, you know, they have insane attack going on, you know, all that stuff. They just like, um, they just like, you know, we, we will just go to an end game, slightly better end game. That's all we need for pure happiness. All right. So, and side duck is spelled as P S Y and then doc d-u-c-k side doc yeah um that's that's like a pokemon that looks really funny all right always says uh i'm, I'm confusion and all that stuff yeah rook dd8 and then uh now if 94 that's kind of the move that everybody's thinking about right now right so here we go like this and black has a better end game at the end. So you may say, why is it better? Well, well, I guess the reasons are pretty obvious. I mean, the pawns are messed up here. Yeah. F4 and F5 and H2 is weird. Kink is more active. So the evaluation here is, I think like 0.4 or 0.5 in black's favor, but it's growing. It's, uh, it's growing, I think 0.4. At least according to the engine when I was looking at it, maybe we can use the cloud engine. Hope you guys are using cloud engines because that's that means that you're actually serious about this game. <laughs> Brian says, yes, spend money, please. <laughs> okay, and I will. All right, let's see. Mm -hmm. Now the cloud engines and the free stockfish engine, that's like night and day guys, night and day, not even close, not even close. What, what, 10 ducats per minute? What, what in the world? All right, anyway, uh, let's use, uh, yeah, let's use the German one. I like the German one here. Some, some reasonable, yeah, this one. Oh no, that's, what flag is that? Okay, we can use this one. This one is super, super cool. Okay, yeah, actually I was in the ballpark. Slightly better end game that actually it grows, it grows to a, a better and better. Like it, it should be growing more than this. At least, yeah, okay, there you go. Yeah, I mean, here you can see that we we have 40 CPUs and yeah, it's an incredibly strong engine. Yeah, but basically it's a ballpark, 0.4 for black. All right. Anyway, so um, in any case, this should be better. Like, I, I believe the evaluation was 0.4 on the depth, like 40 something. So I think that's... That's uh, believable. All right. Okay. Now we can undo the engine. Okay. Well, I still have sixteen hundred ducats, so that's good. All right. Um, okay. So yeah, let's um, keep going. Okay. Anyway, so in the game, White played a move that really made my brain hurt. All right. 
So 92, rook d8. Now, if you guess white's next move correctly from the first attempt, then something is seriously wrong with you, <laughs> okay? But um, let's try. Okay, the move is not 94, okay. Oh, come on. Come on, we got this challenge spoiler, all right. So yeah, they played day four. Yeah. And this one is just, yeah, I was like, you gotta be kidding me. I don't get this game at all. Yeah, I just don't get it, honestly. Like I look at this and I'm like, what's the thought process here? You know, how do you even come up with this thing? Like <laughs> basically if they go a5, a6, a b, and then we go king b8, and we still there is nothing there. So I'm like, that's just weird. That's just so weird. But okay, now we're down to earth. Now queen h4, bishop c3 is quite standard. This is easy. And black is completely winning because of uh, white's king, incredibly exposed, right? And, and most importantly, white doesn't have any counterplay. Like we have a super safe position. Like our king is just relaxing, right? And the king on b1 is being under fire right now. Okay, but that being said, we still need to find, uh, we still need to find something good. Yeah, the good question is if black is winning here, why the white engine didn't go for the end game? I have no clue, honestly. Sometimes they make really weird decisions that are kind of inexplicable. I mean, but yeah, anyway, so here we have a challenge. Try to figure out how to win this for black. It's not a tactical idea, but And after this example, I want to show you one more that is not classic aura, but different engine. And the move was like really difficult to, to see, but somehow it makes sense. It made sense to me after like maybe like 15 minutes of analysis. All right, yeah, we have correct choices here. Okay, correct answer is a5. Okay, so yeah, good job. So a5, because we always need to employ the pawns uh, at the end as well, right? We can't just attack with the pieces. Always remember about the little guys in the attack. So yeah, a5, a4, and then a3. Beautiful, right? The a pawn decided the outcome. And here again, we have an endgame as usual. And I mean, the engines all love end games. And I love end games as well, because that's like the most riskless um, way to win the game. You know, you just can't mess things up. Yeah, and from here, this is not that interesting because all you do, you just promote the pawns basically. All right, now let's try to find the example, the example from this file. So I looked at it just yesterday and I thought it was like a glitch. I thought, you know, something was wrong with the notation, but apparently um, it, it was the correct notation. So yeah, I believe, I believe this is, no, the engine was Facebook, Facebook 2, really weird name. And it was somewhere down here. Let's see. Maybe it was number theory. Let's see. Okay, black. Okay, we only have two games here, and must be this. No, not this one. How oh, weird. Ah, oh, geez. I hope I'll find it. Oh, I know. I'll just go to the game history. Yeah, that's. Much easier. And yesterday was 13th. 
and the game was this one yeah no wait was it no not this one okay i'll find it guys i'll, I'll do it 13 but for some reason it has uh hmm. for some reason it has this Uh, oh, I know, actually, it wasn't the, the best players, and then it was here. Okay, we'll find it real quick. Oh, yeah, this one. Perfect. Okay, I got it. Yeah, this is the game. Okay, cool. Okay, so basically I use this example uh, to illustrate how great you know you can play with your pawns like c4, b3, and then d4. I thought this part was just brilliant on white's on white side. You know, now the a3 pawn is neutralized and the b pawn is kind of stuck there as well. But then the next move for black kind of shocked me. And uh, in fact, the move is incredibly diffi difficult to refute. So the move was um wait, wait you guys have seen this before like how come knight d5 yeah that was the move which is by the way not the best move the best move is d5 and then somehow it's still equal all right after knight d5 white is slightly better but it's incredibly difficult to prove it but then here the next black move was just horrible i saw it and i was just laughing it laughing at it um so basically the correct move is knight d5 and then knight c3 and then somehow black has plenty of compensation which is again hard to understand but it took me like a good 15 minutes to get the full grasp of it you know but basically they played bishop h8 and then just tanked after this bishop h8 is probably the dumbest move i've ever seen in my life <laughs> okay but the idea of the knight sacrifice was quite unusual, even though it's not entirely correct, but it's not like entirely bad either. So quite impressive stuff. All right. All right, guys. Well, I guess um, time is out. All right. So uh, we'll have to call it a day. Okay. And uh, we'll see you. We'll see you later. Okay. Stop.